guys, Rebecca Alvey here. Welcome back to a new video. Um, so last June or July, I'm honestly can't remember which, I did a video um, of a tier list ranking the books that I had read so far in 2023. Um, at that point, I'd read, I think, 18 books. And um, since then, I read another 15 making a total of 20, or no, I can count making a total of 33 books for the year 2023. Um, and so it's about time I get around to ranking the rest of the reads, don't you think? Um, so let me switch over, there we go, to that screen. So we're gonna rank the rest of the reads from 2023 um you can't see them because they're down down on the bottom but um, um these are in no particular order and i am looking like at that that way because they're over on that screen can i like put the mic so it's not in the way of me seeing everything i'm sorry if you are hearing weird stuff and you're now seeing my mic in the corner i'm just trying to position it better for me <laughs> to be able to see the screen. So yeah, these are not in the order I read them. I could have... Okay, computer. I mean, phone. No need to yell. I could have done them in the order I read them, but I didn't do that ahead of time. So we're just gonna... I'm gonna do them in the order they showed up in the list down here. Um, so, first up we've got The Handmaid's Tale. The Handmaid's Tale. Um, by Margaret Atwood. I had high hopes for this book because I loved the show so much, at least the first three seasons. I haven't really kept up watching it since then, since I lost access to Hulu. But um, honestly, the book was really meh to me. I didn't, like, not that I didn't like it, I just, it, it didn't wow me like I thought it was going to. So yeah, it's gonna go in meh. Um, next up we have Spider Bones by Kathy Rikes, and I read three books by her in the latter half of the year, so I will probably go ahead and rank all of them at once, but let's start with Spider Bones. This is an older book, and, um, I'm like, it was a good book. I haven't read a bad book by her, but I don't know if it's, if it's, um, like, worthy of going up very high. I think I'm gonna put it in the bottom of good because it was a good book, um, but I don't think it beat out Wicked Beauty. Alright, my other ones, um, The Bone Code, which, well, the mystery in this was just excellent, um, yeah, right there, right there, duh. yeah, we're gonna put it in the, the second part and perfect because it was just that good um the bone hacker which is her newest book was good was it excellent yes it was excellent um how excellent yeah no it was the top of excellent <laughs> i had to think a second okay um Alright, well, I'm seeing I have Raising Dragons here, and I did read the next two books in that series, or reread. I did a lot of rereading this year. Um, so let's go with the second book in that, Candlestone. This is by Brian Davis. And um, if you remember that previous video, there was a lot of nostalgia attached to Raising Dragons, and that's kind that's not where I'm putting it. Um, that's kind of why the first book got placed where it, where it was. Um... But book two was, I mean, book two's honestly been my least favorite in this particular series for a long time. Um, I'm gonna put it in the top of okay because it's just okay. However, the last book in this, or not the last book, the third book, the last one I read this year in the series, um, Circle of Seven, it's actually going to the top of perfect. It is one of my favorite books ever. And yeah, it's just, it's good. Um, it beat out my Tomorrow Pierce nostalgia. 
Next up, let's finish out, um, you can see I read, uh, oh my god, Gathering of Shadows, A Darker Shade of Magic, there we go. And I, so I read A Darker Shade of Magic and A Gathering of Shadows. And uh, as you can see, like, I loved the first book. The second book was, was good, but not as good as the first. The third book, um, followed a similar pattern. It was not good, as good as the, the first book. But it was better than the second. Um, I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't knock out Radiant Sin, but it, it was good. Speaking of Radiant Sin... <laughs> Let's talk about Cruel Seduction. Actually, let's not talk about it. Let's just be honest. Move. Because that, that's going to immediately knock Circle of Seven out of the top book for the year. Um, I... I went through a journey getting this book. I bought it at one place, found it somewhere else cheaper, so I had to return it to the first place and then go to the other second place and buy it and then um and then that was my birthday and <laughs> two people got it for me for my birthday so I ended up with so many copies and I ended up taking the one that I had bought back and yeah it was just just kind of chaos, but um, <laughs> once I finally got a copy that I was actually going to read, I read through it in probably like two days, and oh, oh, just, just chef's kiss. <laughs> I, I say let's talk about it, but I don't have words. All right, um, let's look at the next book that I read, or that's on the list, um, so, a few years ago, I don't remember if it was when I was ranking books on my channel or not, um, I read a book by Steve Barry, don't ask me what the title was, I don't remember, um, and it was, it was meh, and I was kind of turned off from the author, and I didn't read another book by him until this year. I just, I found it at the thrift store and I was like, you know what? Maybe I should give him another chance. Um, now it was better. I will give, I will read another book. But this particular one, I'll say was just okay. Um, no, it was, yeah, right there. So it was okay, but it wasn't the worst of okay or the best of okay. Let's. I, I love that it's next to the Philippa Gregory book because I have another Philippa Gregory book that I read this year, The Queen's Fool. And this was another one that I really. a book that I really liked. Um, I'm going to pop it right here in the middle of Excellent because it was really good. Um, this book I'm just going to throw into meh because um, it's Legacy by Molly. Cochran, I think? Cochran? I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember the name, how to pronounce it. Um, but okay, there was nothing wrong with the book. Like, it didn't have issues, but it wasn't memorable. Like, I could not tell you now really what the plot of the book was. I, I can't remember it that clearly. So, because of that, it's just gonna go in meh, because it's like, I didn't hate it, but I don't remember it, so. I also found out after I finished it that there are two more books. It's the first book in the series. And, um, yeah, I cannot find those books. They don't exist in the library. I could probably buy them somewhere, but I don't have spare money for book buying right now. So, for whatever reason, that gives it a, a negative to me. Next up is a reread. Maybe. Um, a Court of Thorns and Roses. I read this um, right before I read the, the next book that I'm going to rank. Um, and see, when I first read it, it would have gone straight into perfect. But reading it again, after having read 
other books in the series and just knowing how much better it gets I gotta put it in good honestly yeah it's just good it's not excellent or perfect anymore um then of course the, the book I read next was A Court of Frost and Starlight and I don't know it just it wasn't it wasn't it for me like it was a good book it was interesting in furthering like the story of Feyre and Rhysand I'm sorry I'm a Rhysand girly I, I it hurts to say it Rhysand even though I know that's the correct pronunciation <laughs> So yeah, um, and then I read To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Pellini, is that how you say it? Um, I, am I gonna do it? I think I'm gonna do it. Yeah, it's gonna go right below, no, right below Cruel Seduction, because it was just that good. Um, yeah. So, of course, I grew up reading Aragon, Eldest Heart, the, the Inheritance Cycle. And by the way, the new book is, like, on request of the library. I will read that as soon as it's available to me. Which is hopefully soon. But, um, I didn't really know what I was getting into. I didn't know it was a sci-fi. And I'm glad I didn't know that because I might not have read it knowing that. I'm not, like, like, big into sci-fi. Like, I think you can see from <laughs> the things that I've read this year, I, I mostly read, like, mysteries or fantasy. <laughs> and throw in some random historical fiction for good measure. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I was pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed this book. Maybe I should have realized it was a sci-fi with it being called to sleep in a sea of stars but I'm just I'm, I'm not that smart apparently eh. okay and the very last book I read in 2023 I did save the, the last for last um I read um in fact I think I didn't quite finish it till like January 2nd but I read like most of it in 2023 so I'm gonna count it um <coughs> excuse me um it was Crescent City um House of Earth and Blood uh, by Sarah Day Mass and I reread this because of course we know Flame and Shadows coming out in like 20 days as I know 22 days as I'm filming this um, so I really need to start reading, rereading this second one now, if I'm going to get them both reread. Um, I am, I'm thinking on where to put this. Is it an excellent or perfect? I, I'm not sure exactly where, it, no, I think it goes below Bullknacker, but I, I love that that like rounds out that line yay okay um so that is my tier list for 2023 now let's whoa hi um, now that I don't have to look on screen let's get the mic out of camera <laughs> Let me check my little list here that I was looking at. Um, so let's talk about some of the, some of the stats. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get to where I can read the stats, but also kind of like look at you. So I read 33 total books in 2023, and that was a total of 14,000 418 pages. The shortest book that I read was Cruel Crown and the longest book surprisingly because I definitely thought Crescent City was longer but according to Goodreads the longest book I read was To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. 
so um yeah that was my reading year in 2023 um comment down below and let me know what your reading stats were for 2023 and your reading goals for 2024 i have the crazy goal of reading 48 books this year a whole 15 more than i read this year and considering that some pretty chunky books are coming out that I want to read, um, I'm not sure how this is going to work out, but I guess, I think I was going to figure in the orders from Fiverr into that 48 number. I can't remember. I might be doing that. Um, but yeah, um, as always, don't forget to like this video. <laughs> Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to see more from me. I post new videos every Friday and two Tuesdays a month. I do live streams, we did one last Thursday, and I believe the next one is the 23rd? It might be the 30th, but I think it's the 23rd. Um, and it's scheduled and I'll try to link it down below so you can um, turn on the notifications if you'd like to. Um, but yeah, that is all I have for this video. I will see you all very soon. Bye!